In this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. We're gonna be adding in some dirt and grime into the cracks and crevices of your model. Because in the real world, wherever two surfaces meet or get close together, things like moisture and mildew build up, which in turn results in dirt and grime over time. The method I'm gonna show you takes just minutes to do, and best of all, it doesn't involve any UV unwrapping. Now for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using this model by Ben Danzi, which is available on BlendSwap, but you're welcome to use any model that you like. Now once you've got your model loaded up in Blender, you wanna switch over to Vertex Paint Mode. So once you're in there, go ahead and click on Paint, and then you'll find an option called Dirty Vertex Colors. So go ahead and click on that, and it might take a while depending on how complex your mesh is. But what this will do is it will calculate which parts of your mesh need to be dark and which parts need to be light. So these are the default values right here. But if you push T, you'll get some extra options over here which you can change to adjust this result. So the one value that you wanna change is the highlight angle. I found this value here basically acts as a threshold. Now for this model, I found that a value of 90 works best. Essentially what you want is a mostly white model with some uh, small dark areas where the crevices are. If you've got it too gray or too black everywhere, then it won't look as good. So mostly white, that's where your base material is gonna come through. And then the black areas is where the actual grunge and mold will come through. Now the dirt angle, I haven't actually found to make much of a difference out of uh, over the whole result. But the other one you might wanna change is the blur strength. So that's gonna define how far these dark and white values actually blur into each other. So I'm actually gonna turn this down from its default value to 0.2 because I want it to be a little bit sharper so that the actual grungy dark areas are where it's actually an actual crevice. The other value you might wanna change is the blur iterations, which is again, so they're gonna smooth it out a bit, but you will lose detail that way. Anyway, I found uh, a result like this will give some pretty good results. So again, mostly white with some very subtle dark areas where the actual crevices are. Okay, so we can exit Vertex Paint now. And if you were to go ahead and render this right now, you would find that it actually hasn't changed at all uh, from where it was at the start. Um, the material is exactly the same. But what we can do now is if we go over to the material uh, node setup, we can actually make some adjustments using the data from the vertex colors that we've just uh, painted onto the mesh. So if you look into the uh, object data settings here, and underneath vertex colors, you've got a new entry that says COL. So that's the default name for it, but you can go ahead and name that anything you want. So I'll just call mine dirt map. Now to use that value in our material node setup, you need to go ahead and add in an attribute node. So this attribute node can be used for many things like custom UV maps and all that uh, different stuff. Um, but in this instance, we're just gonna type in its name, dirt map. And we can now use that as a factor input uh, in something like a mix shader or a, a, a mix RGB node to define which parts of the mesh have different colors applied to it. So I should explain, uh, this material setup that I've got here right now, this is just giving me that stone uh, material shader sort of look. So I've got this image texture here, which is a marble texture. And then I've just got some diffuse and glossy uh, combined together. But basically we wanna add in our uh, cavity dirt map right about here. So in order to do that, I'm now gonna go ahead and add in a mix RGB node, drop that in right here. And now taking the factor output from this attribute node and then put that into the factor input of that mix RGB node. Now, if we zoom in here, we wanna flip these around. So at the middle input, this is the value that's gonna define the color of our cavities. So if I set this to be a bright purple pink, you can see that it looks like our pirate has been chilling on an alien beach or something like that. But basically it, it, uh, it tells us that this cavity map is now working. So if you wanted to, you could just set this to like a solid green, something like that, and that would look uh, pretty fine. However, something that I would recommend uh, people do is instead of using a solid color for the cavity map, um, instead use an actual texture either an image texture or a procedural texture. So I'll show you right now how to use a procedural texture. And this will just give us some more detail inside that cavity map. 
So if we go ahead and add in a noise texture and then add in a color ramp texture, and with this color ramp, I wanna give, uh, I wanna add in two different colors. I wanna add in, first of all, that dark um, moldy green color. So something like that. And then on this end, I wanna add in a dirt color. So a sort of a brownish muddy color, something like that, okay? And then if I take the factor output from this noise texture and put that into the color ramp and then take the color ramp output and then put that into the input, which is gonna define the cavity color, um, then that's now gonna basically give us two different colors inside that cavity map. Now it's pretty hard to actually see the texture as it's being applied to this mesh now because the cavity map is so small on this. But if we flip these two values around, just so that we can actually see how it's being applied to the mesh, um, you can see that this, uh, this noise texture here is too small a scale or too large a scale. So let's instead set this scale to be 300. And if we zoom in, what we wanna see is a mix between the green and the brown. So if we bring these together, we might be able to see a little bit more clearly. There we go, something like that. So a bit of green and a bit of brown combined together. Okay, so now put that back into the middle input and then take that and connect it to my uh, stone wall texture right there. And now we have uh, our cavity map there although you can't really see it very well with a green and brown uh, texture in there. Now, if you find that the cavity map isn't, uh, you know, it's not showing through as well as you had hoped, what you can do is go back into vertex paint mode and then actually just apply the exact same thing um, that we just did before. So go paint dirty vertex colors and it's now just gonna use those exact same values and just put it exactly over the top um, of the of the one before. In fact, if you want, you can actually change it and just blur it a little bit. And that'll give us, uh, maybe just stretch out the areas where the cavity map is gonna be uh, affecting it. So there you go. So that, you can see that's gonna be a little bit uh, stronger now. So go back into rendered view mode. And there you go. You can see it a little bit more clearly now. So um, there you go, guys. So I hope that was helpful. As you can see, this could be used for a number of different things. Basically, any model which needs to have some general wear and tear, anything that needs to be outside, such as architecture, or I don't know, any cars or any urban scenes, this sort of thing is gonna be really helpful in order to give it um, that uh, uh, extra touch of realism. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope it was helpful. Have fun.